Next up, we have another live poet. So if you could shake your shakers for Talia Randall. Welcome her to the stage. My name's Talia. How's it going? Good. Um, is anyone here a musician? Yeah, a few people. So I get quite jealous of you guys because sometimes when you're on stage and you're, I don't know, what do you play, for example? You it's lovely. <laughs> what do you, who, who, who put their hand up over there, what do you play? Guitar, great. So you play guitar. So as an audience member, if I'm watching you play guitar beautifully, which I'm sure you do, and you might kind of fuck up a little bit, I feel like a musician can kind of make that work well on stage. Whereas if you're a poet, it's not quite the same. So I kind of have said to myself that if I fuck up on stage, if I forget my words, I'm going to start scatting. Like, yeah? You all know what scatting is, yeah? So if that happens, it's not part of the poem. It's me fucking up. So I really encourage you to join in with me if that happens. Should we do a little practice? Three, two... One. You can be freestyle with it. Come on, yeah. It's really nice. It's really nice. So, I'm going to do two pieces for you. This first piece doesn't have a name. So, if you can think of one, let me know and I post it after you've written your haiku. Actually, does everyone know what a haiku is? You're going to tell them later, aren't you? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll leave them in suspense. Anyway, this first poem, no name. Make a suggestion if you like. I come from a place where the rich kids talk street and the poor kids wear more expensive shoes on their feet than their middle class bread rins. I come from a place where gremlins eat after midnight where skunk-induced insights are upheld as gospel and multiply from the mouths of the flock. A place where boredom is worn as mischief, where despite what we're told, we don't listen. A place where certain wisdoms are not appreciated in their lifetimes. I come from a place of broken life lifelines. Where I'm from, dreams are cocooned in kinder eggs. And children overuse the word fingering and play knockdown ginger, they do, and come home late for dinner. Where I'm from, we shape our hands into lion's paws, swaggering as if we don't give a fuck. We don't show the heart that staggers within, we act like kings. It's like we forgot the substance but got stuck on the pose. We don't see that the pride stunted our growth. Where I'm from, the TV is our fire. And we're fueled by the warm glow of repeats. The clock stays still and the meters tick. But our currency is nostalgia. And where I come from, we're rich. Where I'm from, the boys are called bitches. The girls are called bruv. Where I'm from, we love the same way as you do. It's just that sometimes we show it differently. I come from a place where immigrants talk cockney and eat chips, where the natives eat couscous and supermarket selections of ethnic dips. It seems everyone's afraid of who they are where I'm from, but more afraid of their neighbors. I come from a whirlpool. And the state handed lifeboats to some and anchors to others. A place where bottled up anger floats as messages never to be read. Where your hands are tied as you're marched off the plank. So all you can give is a mouthful. See where I'm from. Council houses disappear into gift wrap boxes. Are tied up with middle class skill and bestowed as inheritance. Where I'm from one family's progress and that is another's decay. I come from a place where I know less than I care to say, a place of average GCSE grades. From a bog standard comprehensive where ambition was finite, dispensed only to some. Where I'm from, we take drugs in the toilet and piss in the streets. We spoil our own turf before someone else does. Sooner self-sabotage than be defeated. We are unruly cells attacking our host, but there is only so much damage we can do to its health because I come from a place immune to itself. Sweet home. 
I left a trail of veins so I could find my way back. That map is scratched into my palm. The same lines that sketch my past are the same that mark my future. A path that winds. A path that binds its way around me like bloodlines. Thanks. Cheers. So, um, in the interest of haiku, who makes some noise if you don't know what a haiku is? Yeah, a few people. I'll explain. You're welcome. Um, I'll explain because I'll then share one. Wouldn't mind some cinema tickets. Just say. <laughs> so, a haiku is basically it's like an ancient form of Japanese poetry writing, and it's re well, it, well, it is, and it's <laughs> well, it is, yeah. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> could be. Also couldn't be. Google it. Anyway, it's an ancient form of Japanese poetry writing, so it's restricted to 17 syllables. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Normally written in three lines, five syllables, seven syllables, and then five. So I've taken that ancient form of Japanese poetry writing... <laughs> And I've written a chat-up line. So, like, Zen monks would use this, this, this form to kind of write a lot about nature, the seasons. It would be very, very restricted. A lot of them are very beautiful. They're quite hard to translate. I say that. They're quite hard to translate. It's if I speak and write Japanese, I don't. But I see, I've heard they're hard to translate. So, anyway, I've taken that quite sacred form to write a chat-up line. This does work. So, if any, is anyone on the pool tonight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poetry night on the pool, I like it. So you can use this tonight, or well, you can try it. I think it works. Um, it's called Chat Up Line Haiku. It's quite original. <laughs> if female ferrets don't fornicate when on heat, they die. It's a fact. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. All true, what I've just said is all true. You can Google it. This is my last piece. Um, before I start, has anyone been back to their old school like a long time after they left? Has anyone done that? It's quite weird, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, go, I work a lot with school, so I go back to my school quite a lot. And my parents, I grew up opposite my school. My parents still live there. So it's kind of still weirdly, I still have like dreams that I haven't done my like coursework and stuff. It's fucked up. So I've written this piece about school. Um, it's also on an EP, which I have. I was about to put the mic to the EP. <laughs> um, which is, I've got a few copies on sale here, but you can also stream it on Spotify if you don't want to spend a fiver. If you do want to spend a fiver, I'll take that fiver and give you this. So there's stories. Um, so kind of poems all about the area that I grew up in. This second one's about school, which I'm about to read. And it's all um, got music as well and sounds from those areas. It's called Free My Radius. And there's a, for those that can't see, that's the head of a dog with the body of a chicken with a condom hat. Which kind of represents Northwest London. <laughs> Anyone here from Northwest London? You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, it's called Comerum. I'm in the year eight common room, bunking maths and chatting fraff. Room splattered with a pattern of back chat. Bodies covered in Reebok, Kappa and Naf Naf, we are the spotty face riffraff. Baffed by the complexities of our pulsating pores, we try to bolt the door on our hormones, but we can't keep this metamorphosis at bay, can't articulate our dismay at this change. So we cope with a throb of wet dreams and the perforation of first tampon by throwing ice pops at each other and breaking each other's Tamagotchis. Remember them? Yeah. Beneath this deluge of puberty, I stare at the boy I pretend not to fancy. Despite the messy way he masticates his chips, cheese and beans, his curtains and tracksuit make me weak at the knees. It's embarrassing. But he doesn't see me. 
See, I'm not part of the clan of underfed and well-bred girls that get invited into teenage beds to wrap soggy hands around newly formed glands. <laughs> yeah. At age 13, my desirability is yet to be acquired, so he evades my gape. He does not reciprocate. In a few years' time, I'll seek revenge and reject him on Facebook, but right now I'm upset that I'm not one of his favourites. In the panoptic space of the year eight common room, the walls are covered in self-conscious slogans that tell us drugs are bad and vegetables are good. As if we can't figure this out for ourselves. But these walls are wiser than they seem. They have seen generations of teens cut their teeth when the teachers don't look, the bricks pull us close to their lips and whisper, these walls will confine you for longer than you think. These years will define you. But we don't listen. Because we're too busy flirting and bullying. Learning these traits that will help us succeed in the workplace. Here we scatter the seeds of teenage dreams that we will never reap. We will get distracted by these ambitions, by curriculums that care more about grades on a page than what is actually in our brains, by teachers who will define what is realistic for us to aim for. Some will get set up to fail by a system that favours compliance over free thinking and some will slip through the cracks and be swallowed by the earth till they erupt in a volcanic violence that will burn everything they touch. They are the lost boys taught to graduate to the status of waste men. The lost girls that are taught to cut out their tongues because sometimes their words are ugly. They are the children of parents who don't have sharp elbows. The only blades they have are made from the shards of the windows they smashed because they were ignored, but they turn those knives inwards instead of severing the shackled mindset that ambition is a luxury they can't afford. And they inhale that glass. It shreds the protest from their tongues. With harsh punishments, we miseducate our young, and they can't climb above the wreckage to free their lungs because that social ladder's broken at the bottom rungs. But there are those who will succeed. And they will learn to shut up and listen. How to copy from textbooks and be part of a system. How to form an orderly queue outside a classroom that will extend through time into a never-ending line to board the tube at 8.25 a.m. every day. But back to 13. Fumes of first fag fill the music room. Her nose twitches as she enters, and I wonder if Miss knows what I've been up to, so I hide behind the giggles fueled by Dr. Pepper and salt and vinegar discos, scared I'll get caught. My adolescence is wrought with these meaningless secrets. Then the music teacher screeches, a proper cup of coffee from a proper copper coffee pot. In choir practice, we're made to repeat this over and over again till our individual voices blend into one shrill sound. Here, we will learn how to be part of a crowd. But what about those who can't sight read? Those that can't keep beat? Those off-key people will get pushed to the sidelines because they don't seem quite right. Those that stand out like sore thumbs will have to lower their voices till they're insignificant. They will hide behind dumbness and indifference. They will be pushed into a humdrum future where they can't be too loud because they boxed up their voices and lost the keys behind classroom doors. And I'm not blaming any teachers because their dreams were traded too. For instant coffee and rush lunch breaks in the staff room. The weight of red pens crippled the fingers that once pointed to stars. And the passion of inspiring young minds was dampened by streamlining children into hierarchies. And thereby marking out their destinies. I'm in the year eight common room. Sewing adolescent fantasies into the upholstery of state-issued chairs, but these hopes will be superseded by a pattern of hierarchy that will see classrooms transform into office blocks and teachers into bosses. At age 13, I'm too naive to see my future in the coffee room. Bunking work and shirking my duties. Room splattered with a pattern of chit-chat. Bodies covered in pinstripe skirt, suit and tie, we are the white-collar riffraff. 
We flirt over spreadsheets in the hope that we'll get to dirty our bedsheets. We stuff our dreams underneath mattresses where no one can see, but like the princess, we're kept awake by the pinpricks of the pea. And we keep these secrets buried deep as we walk the life that was mapped out for us at age 13. Thanks. I'll be selling CDs at the back if you want one. Have a good night. The quite wonderful Talia Randall. Amazing.